everybody, Ben Woodruff here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some very interesting concepts, uh, and hopefully help you put some things together. Uh, before I do though, before I jump in, if you could hit subscribe, I very much appreciate it. It helps me keep this channel up and going. So today we're talking about some petroglyphs, but we're also gonna talk about just how in depth ancient peoples all over the world, but it's particularly here in the American Southwest, were connected with the heavens. And I don't mean that in a spiritual sense, I mean that in a very literal sense. Uh, I think there's an inaccurate thing that people do, which is that we assume that ancient peoples were not smart. That, that because we have become so technologically advanced that their worldview is quite simple. But in many ways, it's quite the opposite. We see that ancient peoples all over the world were more in tune with the movements of the land. They understood where stars were going to be in the sky and at what time of year. They could roughly tell. They could tell their directions easily. Now, we know today we can chart a course using the North Star and a few constellations and, and, and chart a basic course, but people were very much more attenuated and connected with these things. Most people, when they go outside today and they see stars, they're just like, it's a bunch of stars. But it was very much a map, and it gave you a sense of where you were on the planet as well as in the universe. Now, there's certain things that happen regularly, right? Like there's, um, you know, eclipses that happen. Uh, well, I mean, let's, let's back up a little here. There's uh, the equinoxes and the solstices, right? Every three months you have an equinox or a solstice where, you know, the longest day of the year, shortest day of the year, and you can see the movements of the sun. That's very regular. And it's very important to understand. People a lot of times think, oh, why did, did people really anciently monitor these things? Yes, especially if they were agrarian. If you're growing crops, it's vital that you know when to plant, when to harvest, when the monsoon rains are coming, when it's gonna get cold. Uh, if you're two, three weeks off and you're planting, forget it, your, your harvest is not gonna happen in time and you, your entire community might die. <laughs> so it's pretty crucial to understand these things. Now, the reason why a lot of times there's a lot of spiritual connection to these sorts of things, just the basics like the equinoxes and the solstices, is so that you can remember it, so you can pass it on, especially in communities that didn't have a written language, which many of these did not. So uh, if you grew up learning the English alphabet, um, those characters, you had a little song, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and there was a song. The song is not important, but it allowed you to remember it uh, and me, even today, if I'm trying to figure out words, I still hear the song in my head. Uh, the letters are what are important, the characters, not the song. But the song helps you remember. Attaching spiritual stories and mythologies and beliefs to some of these things and having deities, uh, figures that are personifications of ideas, like, you know, having a deity figure that is represents the rains. Uh, oh, it's the rain god. Well, it, it's representing, okay, you gotta do this, 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 this time to appease the rain god. Well, it's, it's about timing things so that you can plant and harvest at correct times. So it's much easier to remember by attaching mythology and spirituality to it. You can pass this information on. But this information was vital and people do not realize just how in touch people were with the heavens. Uh, that's not exactly what this video is about, but I'm going to back that up in a moment. This video is about spiral petroglyphs. Spiral petroglyphs, you see them all over the world. Uh, it's a very simple shape. Even a little kid doodling can do a spiral. So it's entirely possible that what I'm proposing here is just is not accurate at all. It could be what I'm going to say that these spiral things represent is not accurate at all, or it could be 100% accurate, or it could be in some instances it is, in some instances it is not. But let me get to this. In 1054 AD, which is kind of in the middle of right the, the kind of the thriving times of the ancestral Puebloan people here in the American Southwest and the Mexican Northwest, uh, there was a star that supernova It exploded supernova and it became a nebula. <laughs> huge supernova. This was so bright that it could be seen as a big thing bigger than, it would have been bigger than the moon uh, by our what, what was seen, and you could see it day and night. Now, how do we know about this? Well, cultures that did have writing did document this. The Mayan people had a very advanced writing system, and they documented this happening. The Chinese wrote it down, and we still have those documents. The Japanese did this, and so did the Arabs. All of these peoples in the world 
wrote down and documented this, and it lasted for several weeks. Uh, in some parts of the world, you could see it for several months, day and night. And then eventually, you could no longer see it in the day, but you could see it at night, and eventually it reduced down. What we have today, what's left of this supernova event, is the Crab Nebula. Now, um, the Crab Nebula, you can kind of see it as sort of like a star, but you kind of need to see it with binoculars now. You can easily, easily see it with just a pair of binoculars. But when it first happened, it was huge. Now, just to give you an idea that it's still moving, even though it's diminishing greatly, here's just a little GIF uh, that was done of uh, footage that was taken of it between 2011 to 2021. Astronomical events happen in grand time scales. So again, even over all those years, you see by our perspective, it moved just a little. But again, when this happened in 1054 AD, this was astronomical, this was huge. Now, the peoples here in the New World, we know for a fact that they had a great understanding and a great reverence for that. Uh, now there's the regular events, regular solar and lunar events, right? You have the cycles of the moon and you have the cycles of the sun, the equinoxes and the solstices. Then within that, you have on a broader range, if you keep track and measure time, you have uh, solar eclipses and lunar eclipses. We know those were tracked for sure, uh, verifiably by the Maya people. But you also have Venus. Venus has very interesting transits and it, it dances and goes forward and backward in very strange ways in the heavens. We know from very specific observatories that the Mayan people absolutely did chart and track the, the, the course of Venus. But we also know that there's much broader things as well. Uh, for example, um, there's the lunar events that happen about every 18 years. Um, so it's called a lunar standstill. So basically, there's a point where the axis of the Earth and the axis of the Moon line up, and for a short period, about every 18.6 years, then the Moon will be in the same spot every day instead of because it's always moving and then it goes back. It's, it's going opposite of the way the Earth rotates by our viewpoint. And when it does that, you might not notice if you just see it out there. But ancient ancestral Puebloan people did. They saw this, they recognized it, they understood it, and they documented it. Now, we don't have their writings, but we do know, for example, there is a Chacoan great house in Colorado at a place called Chimney Rock. And this is a very odd site because this is up on a very steep ridge. And if you see it, it's like, okay, this is a really commanding view, but this is a terrible place to live. You gotta haul your water up thousands of feet from down below and you had to, to build this. It's like, why do this? There's a lot of reasons why, and I will uh, address this site more specifically later. But there's these two rock formations that give it the name Chimney Rock. And we know that during this lunar standstill, the moon appears right between these two uh, formations from the perspective of where this uh, this Pueblo was, this great house was specifically built. And even more specifically than that, the great Kiva that was there, if you were coming out the doorway of the great Kiva, if you're walking out and looking right in between, or if you were outside where the smoke comes out, it's right in between those two rocks. It was lined up intentionally. Now. Again, I'm not getting too much into this, but we know from this site that there was very advanced uh, align alignment done as well with many other solar and lunar events. Uh, but again, if you're doing something every 18.6 years, there's a lot of understanding that goes into there. Um, and uh, we see this in other places as well. Uh, this site, the Chimney Rock site, is connected directly to Chaco Canyon, New Mexico. We know there was trade and there was communication going on back and forth. And in Chaco, there's incredibly advanced forms of tracking celestial events. Um, so, for example, in uh, Casa Rinconada, which is a great kiva up on a hillside, there are all kinds of openings in the sides of the kiva, and the kiva used to have a roof over the top, and at certain days of the year, like equinoxes or solstices or events with the moon or events with Venus, then the light will shine in through and shine over to the other side and point into a little alcove so you know, oh, when the sunlight is hitting this, we know it is this day, it is time we need to plant, it is time we need to harvest, this is the day. 
So this is how it was known. Now, even more famously in Chaco Canyon, up on the bottom Butte, um, there's big old sacred mesa, big old formation. And on top, there's a bunch of rocks that just had fallen down. And the people found that uh, at a certain time of year, the light would shine through. On the equinoxes and the solstices, the light would shine through in very specific ways. So they chiseled a petroglyph in the shape of a spiral. And at one time of year uh, for the equinox, then they, they call it the sun dagger, and it will go right through the center of that spiral. And on the solstices or the other side, it'll, then they'll have two sun daggers that go on either edge of that spiral. So what this is very similar to is uh, if you ever see on Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, the, ver the first one, when he goes into the Well of Souls and he has the staff piece of raw and he's got the staff and the sun at a certain time of day and a certain time of year shines through and it will point onto a map, which is... Uh, Actually, it's really cool, and it seems like it's just a bunch of Hollywood nonsense, and it's actually directly ripping off the 1954 movie Secret of the Incas, starring Charlton Heston, where same thing, where he has a, a, a glass piece and he shines it through, and it shines and shows where the treasure is hidden. Uh, so, it, you know, and that was very much an inspiration for Indiana Jones. But this stuff is real. These ancient people knew how to do this and they would have go at this certain time of day, this certain time of year, this certain place and light is gonna shine through and it's gonna show you this. But this spiral in the center, why a spiral? Now I want to go back again and say, we know that humans make spirals. Little kids do it. It's a very natural shape. It's just messing around. People can do that. But there are many people and there are many uh, descendants of these ancestral Puebloan people who have said that they believe that these spiral shapes are commemorating the Crab Nebula forming, that supernova. Now, there's never, for thousands of years, there hasn't been anything like this. So again, we're dealing with people who are with it enough and are connected enough to the land, to the sky, to be able to see, okay, every three months there's a solstice or an equinox. Oh, and you got the transit of Venus every year. And then you got, you know, every 18 years you have the lunar standstill. Well, it's, it's pretty far, you know. When you think back then, people probably weren't living past the age of 30. 18 years, it's a long time. So people understood these things. They were connected to these things. But there's nothing like a supernova. That's something that's going to happen once only every few thousand years is that going to be seen, witnessed, and recognized. To see a supernova where you have this thing, you know, bigger than the moon, this big bright light, this kind of spiraling and kind of looking out there, and you can see it in the day and the night for a few weeks. And then you can see it at night for a few months, and then it disappears. That is a sign of what, who knows, who knows how people interpreted it back then, but it's something to watch for. We do have evidence at that Chimney Rock site that people marked it. They marked where it happened and had a spot to see that this is where it's marked in case it happened again, which it's not gonna happen again. It's the Crab Nebula, it's, it's a star supernova but they didn't know what it was. It was just this amazing thing. We gotta commemorate it, we gotta mark it, and when it happens again, then we'll mark how much time has passed and then watch for it to happen again at that same increment of time, which is never going to happen because they didn't know what they were dealing with. But such a symbol like that, there's nothing like it. You gotta think, we live in a world where we understand, oh, the sun is, you know, burning hydrogen and helium combusting. Okay, we know that. And we know that at a certain point, a star will supernova. We know what planets are. We've been to different planets and we've been to the moon. I was just like, okay, we, we, we understand these things and it's easy to kind of tone them down. But if you don't know what those are and you just see them, but you've grown up with them, so it's not unusual. There's nothing unusual about the sun or the moon. There is but not if you grew up with it, which we all grew up with the sun and the moon. It doesn't seem strange to us. It's like, ah, it's the moon. Maybe you have a legend. Maybe the sun is a, is a, is a god, and maybe the, the moon is his wife or something, depending on what culture you're in, you know, or, you know, the Popovu, the sun and the moon are the, are the, are the, are the two hero twins, uh, Hunapu and Spilanke, you know, when they ended up becoming these sky deities, you know, and you give them a name, it's an easy way to understand them, even though it's a big circle. 
Okay. Well, in that world, the sun, the moon, the stars, even though they didn't know exactly what they were, they were normal and they were discernible and predictable and had patterns that were recognizable. But a supernova does not. And that would rattle you to your core to have a celestial object that can be seen day or night um, and then disappears after a while and fades. That had to have had an impact and that had to have been shared. You, I'm sure if you saw it, you would have shared it for years and for generations. Oh, the time that this, who knows, who knows what they called it, but this thing formed in the heavens and it spiraled out and it was, it was glorious and we saw it in the day and the night and maybe it was a good omen, maybe it was a bad omen, maybe it was a, a deity figure, who knows? But you know that would have had an insane, intense impact on people's minds and on their worldview. It would have rattled things, you know? I'm sure the, the shaman and the medicine men would have really been wondering and scratching their heads, what does this mean? And so it, it makes sense that such an event would be commemorated to stone. It's like, well, hey, we're depicting a deer, we're depicting me shooting a bighorn sheep over here, and uh, oh my goodness, there's this thing, we gotta depict this event. How would you depict it? Well, you know, what, are you just gonna make a big old blob in a rock? Uh, and again, with the pictures we see of the Crab Nebula today are as it faded down. At the beginning, it would have expanded outward and those rings with limited human eyes would have looked like not concentric spirals, but like spirals to human vision. And now that has faded away. So I think it is 100% likely that many of these spirals we see are commemorating the event of the supernova of the Crab Nebula. Um, and maybe even by people who didn't see it. Maybe you were explaining it to people and you show them and you're like, yeah, great grandpa made this on this rock face and let me tell you about it. And it was, oh, we saw it in the day or the night and it was an omen of this or of that. Uh, and you're just sharing it. Maybe you replicate that same symbol even though you've never even seen it. So I think it's likely because what else do we have out there that would have commemorated? Surely such an event would be commemorated. Again, as we know from the Maya people to the south to the Chimney Rock people to the north, we know that people did uh, note it and we know they did make structures to measure and to see if it would ever come back again. So if they're measuring if it'll ever come back again, it stands to reason they also would have likely depicted it and conveyed it and commemorated it in stone. And so that is what I am suggesting. Might not be accurate, but it, it very likely is. So I wanted to share this because I think it is important that people are aware of this. Uh, that, that it's good to understand how different the worldview was for these ancient people and also how advanced they were and how connected they were to their surroundings, both on the earth and in space, and how earth shattering and rattling it would have been to see a supernova and have that experience. Uh, and I think it trickles down even today. And I really do think that's what uh, many of these spiral petroglyphs are. So hope uh, that you can carry that information with you and uh, let me know your thoughts, your comments. I'd like to know your perspective on it, see what you think. And maybe if you have knowledge that I don't know about, I would love to hear it down in the comments. Uh, if you haven't already, if you could please hit subscribe, I very much appreciate it. And always remember that life is a gift. So never stop learning and never stop exploring. We'll see you next time.